Well, hello there. We are looking today at determining the rule for a parabola. And by that, I mean we are going to be given the graph of the parabola, and we have to work backwards from the graph to what the rule for that particular parabola is. Now, this is a source of uh, great confusion for many students, but it's actually very, very simple. So I'm going to make it easy for you today and uh, by showing you the way I do it. I classify them as a, as a type, a type, just by looking at them. And then I, then I use the rule for that type of graph. And I actually have five types of graphs. So type one, that's this little beastie here. So can you have a good look at that now? What do you think? How would you describe this parabola? Well, one thing you can say, it's symmetrical about the y-axis, can't you? Yes. And it passes through the origin. That's another thing you can say, okay? That's how you characterise a type 1. So that's the expression. That, well, that is the equation that you use for a type 1 to solve for the basically the rule of that graph, that parabola in that graph. Now, what you need is you need a one known point apart from the origin. And we do have that. So I will solve for what this particular parabola is using that equation and this point. You watch. So we've got y equals ax squared, don't we? Good. Now, let's substitute 1 and 2 into that expression. y is 2x is 1. We get that. Therefore, a just comes out easily as number 2. So therefore, he is a Mr. y equals 2x squared uh, parabola in this example. That's the rule. That was easy, wasn't it? So now, can you recognise that as a type 1? So, however, if it wasn't a type 1, let's go on to type 2. That's what we do. We just go down the checklist from the easiest to the last one, which is not much fun, number 5. He's Mr. Desperado. However... Um, you don't have to get to him very often. This is type 2. This is the same as a type 1, except... What is the difference? Come on. Yeah, it's been translated. It's been translated either up or down from the origin. Okay, So it's just a little bit more complication, but not much. So let's, uh, let's work out what the rule for this one is. But first, we need to get the general template for the rule. It is symmetrical about the y-axis. It does not pass through the origin. And there's our expression. There's our template expression for what this is. It's a y equals ax squared as it was up here, except you've added b. That's the vertical translation component of the rule. Okay? So we need any two known points to do this, right? And we're going to do it now for this particular one that I've given you there. So y equals ax squared plus b. First of all, we'll substitute in Norton 1, and we get that equation, right? We need to solve for a and b, so we need two equations, right, in two unknowns, to, uh, for, to solve for two unknowns. Let's substitute in one and, uh, 1 and 2 now. Sorry, guys, I made a little blooper there, so I've just paused the video and fixed it. That's supposed to be 1 and 2. I had 2 and 3 there. My humble apologies. So I've now um, just uh, do a video replay in your mind. These points here are 0 and 1 and 1 and 2. So we're substituting 1 and 2 in now to the express, into the equation, uh, into here. That's 2, and that guy there, that little x gremlin, is 1. We get that. Now... Let's, we've got two equations, two unknowns, it's easy as. So substitute b equals 1 from equation 1 into equation 2, and what do we get? 2 equals a plus 1, therefore a equals 1, and it's all over, game over. We've converted our template into a real uh, rule for this particular situation here. Okay, y equals x squared plus 1 in this example. So there's type 1, there's type 2. Now... If it wasn't a type 1, and if it wasn't a type 2, we go to the next item on the checklist until we basically get to what we need to do to solve for the rule, given the graph, yeah? Type 3. Now, this is called turning point form, okay? Now, there's a graph in turning point form. You must have the vertex, the, the point where the graph turns from going downhill to uphill or vice versa if it's an upside-down one. And this, in this case, you must be given both x and y coordinates of the turning point, plus you need another point, but I'm getting ahead of myself here. It's not symmetrical about the y-axis. No, it's not. 
And that's the form. That's our template. That's our template, right? The turning point is H, X is H, and Y is K. And we need another point in case it's been dilated or stretched from either axis to work out what A is, right? Now, that's right, H and K is the turning point, and what you need is the turning point coordinates and another known point, yes? So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, we'll turn our template into the real-life uh, rule for this particular scenario here. Uh, let's substitute H is 1 and K is 2 because that is, that's where our turning point is, guys. So let's just do that straight away. Oh, boy, we've almost fixed it. We've almost got it, haven't we? Now, all we've got to do now is substitute the other point, which was 2 and 4. And what do we get? We substitute that in. 4 equals A times 2 minus 1 all squared plus 2. And we just whittle that down to get what A is. So A is going to be 2, isn't it? Oh, it's beautiful. And there we are. We've, two, we've, we've got our rule. Yeah? Isn't this simple? See? It's so simple. If you just do it systematically, type by type. Now, if it wasn't a type 1, and if it wasn't a type 2, and if it wasn't a type 3, here comes type 4, which is called intercept form. Right? And that's an example of intercept form. Uh, you may have guessed by now, that means that you are given all x-intercepts, okay? All x-intercepts. Now, um, these are basically linear, uh, the crossing over type x-intercepts, that's all right. Uh, if you had one that just came down like here and just touched and went back up without, cro without cutting through the x-axis, that would be a repeated or squared uh, linear inset, intercept. I'll, uh, but we'll do this example here uh, just to show you what to do, right? Now, that's our template. That's our template, right? Where B and C, okay, X is B and X is C are the two X intercepts as in this scenario here. If it was just coming down to one particular point on the X axis and then just shooting back up without cutting through the X axis, it would be a times x minus b all squared, or if you like, a times x minus c all squared, right? So it's the same, it's the same thing, right? But this is intercept form, right? Let's go for it now. Uh, the x-intercepts in this case, yes, are b, naught, uh, the y is naught, of course, of the x-intercept, and c and naught, right? So we just, we need both x-intercepts uh, and one other known point to work out the dilation factor which might have been caused here. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. So we've got that. We'll substitute, in this case, b is minus 1. Be careful with the minus bit, right? Where we're going x minus minus 1, which will get us x plus 1. And c is 2, so let's do that. Yes, good. Now, we've just got to substitute our other point in. We're nearly done, and we'll get the value of a. So substituting 3 and 8 in, we'll get that. And it's looking very good, and we can easily solve that for A. It looks like A is 2 to me. Yes, yes, yes. And there's our answer. There's our answer for the rule. See? It's easy, isn't it? Now, okay, so if it isn't a type 1, and if it isn't a type 2, and if it isn't a type 3 turning point form, and if it isn't a type 4 intercept form, then I'm afraid it's desperado stakes here, guys, is random. So that's random. There you are. We're not given turning points, we're not given intercepts, it's not symmetrical about the, the y-axis, it's just a random beast. And we have to solve it by using these three given points. We need three different given points to solve for A, B and C. We need three equations, yes? So three random points given. Uh, we, yes, we're not given intercepts or turning points, unfortunately, and this is a last resort, the desperado, okay? But however, it's not too bad. It's, like, it's actually quite a lot of fun solving these because it gives you a lot of confidence, yes? There's our template. There's our template, right? What do you need? Uh, we need three known points to solve for A, B and C for you and me. And there it goes. Let's do it. Come on, we're going to do it. Now, you, you need to fasten your seatbelts because I'm going to get three simultaneous equations here, which will be a lesson all by itself. If you're not sure, we're going to solve three simultaneous equations for A, B and C using the method of substitution, which we always do when we have more than two um, equations, which, which I always do anyway, uh, to solve for simultaneously. Now, uh, substitute in the minus 3 and 11 one, and what do you get? You get that, right? 
Substitute in the minus 2 and 5, 1, you get that. Substitute in the 1 and 11, and you get that. Now, here it comes. Come, We've got to solve simultaneously for A, B, and C, guys. Now, all right, you ready? Now, what I think I'll do is I'll go with the, with the simplest-looking equation where the coefficients of these A, B, and C terms are just 1, and I'll eliminate one of the variables by expressing it in terms of the other two with this equation. Yeah, solving by hand. Eliminate C. That's what I've chosen to do. You could, you could do it any other way. You could eliminate A or you, you could eliminate B. It doesn't matter. I've just chosen to eliminate C. So from equation 3, I can say that C, making C the subject, is 11 minus A minus B. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to sacrifice that equation 3 so it now becomes inactive in, within the context of our solution process. I'm going to substitute C equals 11 minus A minus B into both equations 1 and 2, the other two equations, and you'll see that C will be gone, and it'll just end up being in terms of A and B. Watch. I sub for C in terms into 1 and 2. Now, there's equation 1. Now, you'll see that's the C term, right? Now, we've just got to clean that up, and doing that, and doing that, and doing that. Now you can divide by 4 as well. So that gets me equation 1, well daughter or son of equation 1 because it's not exactly the same as equation 1 was but it came as a direct descendant of equation 1. So I call it, a, my, simple, my system is I call it equation 1a, okay? Son or daughter of 1. Now we're, doing, we're going to do exactly the same process now by substituting for c is equal to 11 minus a minus b into equation 2, right? Here we go. Uh, yes, now clean up time. Uh, yes, yes, oh, divide by 3, fills us with glee. We get that, that's equation 2, daughter of 2 or son of 2, yes. Uh, and now, so we've now got two equations now in just A and B. See, it's just simple now, we can just fix it up and solve it in the, in the manner which we are, cust are accustomed to doing. But I'll just summarise what we've got because this gets all a bit, a little bit like a blizzard of algebra all over the page. So this is what we've got. Now these are the two equations I'm going to solve for now, right? So um, whether we use elimination or substitution, I think I'm, attempted, I'm, I think I'm a bit tempted to use uh, elimination for this. Subtract 2a from 1a, yes, and the b terms will knock out. So you just get 2a minus a, that's from the a terms, plus negative b, take away negative b, or plus b, right, from the b terms, and you'll get 0 minus negative 2, or 0 plus 2, from the, uh, the numbers on the right-hand side. Now, cleaning that up, we just, oh, goodness, that didn't take much cleaning up, did it? a is 2, for me and you. Now, what you do, ladies and gentlemen, is you work backwards now. From the original two equations, I can easily work out what B must have been if A was 2, and I'm going to do that. I'm going to substitute A equals 2 into 2A, okay, and 2A becomes minus 2 is equal to not A, but 2 minus B, and then we can solve that for B, right? So B will end up being 4 if you work that out. Solve that for B, you'll get 4. Now, we're nearly done now. All we've got to do now is find an equation where A, B and C feature. And then, uh, because we know A and B, the, the answer to what C is will become obvious. So I suggest maybe equation 3. This one's a nice, easy one, without too many high coefficients or anything to make our life miserable. Uh, yes, very good. So we've got that. That's what equation 3 is. And it looks like C is 5 to me. My goodness. Look, we solved it, guys. Come on, pat yourself on the back. We did it. Isn't that terrific? Look, we did it. So uh, there we go. You see? Desperado number five, you're not a problem for us. Well, you would be a problem if we had very large coefficients and all kinds of <laughs> other uh, murderous things thrown in. But we're fine. And we know how to do it, yes? You just have to keep your cool, be careful, and don't end up in the algebra ditch. Check every step, because there's a lot of processing going on when you're solving these things. I think I've done it with the calculator over the screen. Yes, using CAS. There it is. Um, I showed you how to do this before with two simultaneous equations. Well, this is the same thing with three. Isn't it spectacular? Look. Kaboom! It just comes out with the answer, as easy as. So, um, yeah, the calculator is a marvellous tool. So I think that's it. Uh, oh, some, no, 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 we've got some examples. Sorry about that. I forgot. 
some examples. Uh, we'll just choose some random looking graphs, and then we'll um, we will we will classify them as to what type they are. Then use the template that we've got for that type, and then basically work out the actual rule. Here we go. Now this one. Now have a look at it. Is it a type one? Is it symmetrical about the y-axis? Uh uh. Is it a type 2? Is it symmetrical about the y-axis and just translated up a bit or down from the origin? No, it isn't. So it's not that, it's not type 1 or 2. Is it a type 3? Do we have the turning point and another point? I think we do. This is turning point uh, form. So here we go. Let's do the template. There it is. And we'll substitute in h is 1 and k is 3 because that's what the turning point values are. And we get that. Now we're, all we've got to do is now substitute our other point, which happens to be the y-intercept, but still it's just another point, to get the value of a today, Norton 5. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, yes, uh, it looks like. I think I predict a is going to be 2. Yes, yes, it is. There's our, there it is, guys. Look, now that was very easy, wasn't it? Once you identify the type, look, it's not a problem anymore. Uh, second one, okay. Uh, is it a type 1? Is it... No, it's not even on the origin. The vertex is not even on the origin. It's not a type 1. Is it a type 2? Symmetrical about the y-axis but just translated up or down? No. Is it a type 3? Do we have the turning point? No. Look no further. Is it a type 4 where we have the intercepts plus any other point? Yes, it is. So therefore we have type 4 intercept form. All right? So let's put the template out for that. There it is and substitute in for our both uh, our x-intercepts. b would be minus 1 if you like, and c could be 2. Putting that in, yes, uh, we'll get that. Just remember, don't mess this up. It's x take negative 1, right, which becomes x plus 1. Now we substitute our other point in, which looks like this y-intercept point, to get the value of a today, hooray. And that looks right. And it's just a simple matter of solving for A now. Looks like A is 2. Yes, and there's, there is our equation. You see, there is our rule. It's just as easy as anything, isn't it? Yeah? I hope this is, makes it a lot better for you. Ah, what's that? This is the last one. Look, that's uh, not a type 1 because it's not sitting on the origin, but it is a type 2 because it's symmetrical about the y-axis and it's been translated. It's an upside down quadratic translated up three units, okay? And it is symmetrical about the y-axis so therefore it's a type 2. It's a type 2 for me and you. There we go. There's our template. There's our template. Let's just substitute in the two known points. First of all I think we should substitute the y-intercept because x is naught in that instance, and that'll just get us straight to the value of b, which I think you'll find will be 3. Very good. Very, very excellent. Now we're just going to substitute the other point in to get our value of a. So there it is. I've just put in that b is 3 in there because we know it's 3. It looks like uh, a is going to be minus 2. For me and you, you who. There it is. There's our, there's our rule. Are you pleased? I'm delighted. I think this is great. So type... Just do the types. Just do the types. Go from type 1. If it's not type 1, go type 2. If it's not type 2, go type 3. If it's not type 3, go type 4, which is intercept form. And then if that doesn't work, if none of that works, go for desperado type, which is random, and solve simultaneously three equations for A, B, and C. And you're a star. Rightio, thank you for listening to me today. I hope it helps you, and we'll see you next time. Bye.